Hey guys, so as I'm stuck here going nowhere fast on the North Circular traffic, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Fast and Furious 10 or Fast X, which I saw last night. So here is uh, my thoughts on the movie. I'll try not to have any spoilers in this, but no promises. So spoiler alert just in case. It's coming right after this. So Fast and Furious, let's just talk about Fast and Furious as a franchise first of all and I have a confession to make, I mean, you know, like most of us have a kind of a, most of us car people if you like have a sort of love-hate relationship with Fast and Furious it's, you know, the, the movie, I think everybody agrees that the first installment, maybe even the second installment were very, very um, relatable, very authentic in terms of cars and car culture in the sense that there was a lot of very nerdy stuff in there, a lot of very geeky stuff in there. Um, I know a lot of the modified car culture really took those movies to heart because it really kind of reflected um, the situation uh, quite well. Also the technical aspects of it very well. And then of course, later on, it became, it, it started from a, um, a street racing heist movie or gangster movie um, into basically becoming the, uh, motorized or automotive equivalent of Avengers I mean if you think about it that's what it is right Vin Diesel is basically Captain America and then the rest of his team are the Avengers so whenever he goes Avengers assemble that's when the family family that's with a B family the family uh, get back together again you know it has grown or evolved into something that was was much much it's quite vastly different from where it started out, put it that way. It started out with a bunch of ordinary people racing cars and uh, you know, an ordinary undercover cop getting it abysmally wrong, etc, etc. And it ended up being a superhero movie. I don't know if you can hear me, there's a massive truck right next to me now. Yeah, so it's basically become a superhero movie now because now the absolutely impossible death-defying, gravity-defying, physics-defying stunts and set pieces that they now do in the movie um, really does put put it right into Marvel comic book terrain really doesn't it? Let's be honest. And of course the latest installment is no different but just again just keeping with the whole movie as a whole going back to the confessional love-hate relationship probably more love than hate let's be absolutely honest the reality is that I've seen every single installment at the cinema when it came out including the latest one and I've probably seen most of the movies multiple times and that's not because I sought them out or deliberately decided to see them multiple times but it's one of those things where every time you see you look down the the TV schedules and you see that one of it one of the episodes is on and you go nah I've seen that but then inevitably you put it on and then you just get drawn in and that's it then you, you then you find yourself watching it and uh, it's inevitable and I think that one of the reasons that is is because you know as car people when you look at what is out there you know that basically looks at cars covers cars I think that the Fast and Furious franchise is the one that consistently continues to serve us in a sense you know whether you, whether it's CGI whether it's fake whether the stunts are ridiculous whether the cars are real or replicas or whatever but the reality is that there's always a fair amount of car action in there and proper car action like actual torque horsepower actual burning rubber and even in the latest one you will see I mean there's a lot I mean the opening sequence with the modern Dodge Charger um, is absolutely ridiculous the car would have died you know in the first first segment of that whole sequence if you like but it seems to just keep going on and on and on <coughs> the weird thing is that even though I know that <coughs> the car that it would have been impossible for that car to carry on doing what it was doing I couldn't help but feel quite excited by that car and quite 
told by that car and quite like, oh, yeah, go car. I was literally like, go car, you can do this. Vin Diesel is behind the wheel. I should probably be saying go Vin. But actually, you know that the car is doing most of the work. And and, it, and that a lot of that carries through where the cars do... It, it's literally like when you, you know, there is the other aspect of it. And it is what none of the car, none of the reviews, I read some of the movie reviews after. I would read them after the movie. So I've already, you know, if I've decided to watch a movie, I've decided to watch it. So I'm not going to read a review about it. I'm going to go watch the movie, then decide for myself, and then read the reviews and see if other people agree with me or not. So I read a few reviews last night. And I have to say that the one thing that none of them touch on, because they're not written by car people, is how car people relate to the movie. Now, when you see the crazy stunts they do, when they have cars falling out of airplanes or cars flying off into space, which has all happened in previous episodes, so no spoilers there, we, we've all seen that happen, then, you know, you think in the real world, you think that's absolutely ridiculous, right? But when you go back as a car kid, as a car person, you generally, uh, you've been a car kid. And as a car kid, you've had your, your box full of uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars. And what have you done with those Matchbox and Hot Wheel cars? Well, you've done exactly that, you know? You've made them fly, you've thrown them from a hide, you've maybe stuck a parachute on top of them, you know? You've done those things. So, when you see it happen in a movie, you're just like, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I imagine that when I played in a cops and robbers with my toy cars, my cars did all of that. So why not, you know? And I think that's part of the appeal for car guys. So in addition to the fact that, you know, there is genuine car action in there, which really does appeal, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a level where you can go, oh, that's a little bit of realism as to how cars behave, how cars react, how cars run. But also when you see the crazy stuff, then you just transport it back to your childhood and you go, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I did when I had a bunch of Maxbox and Hot, Hot Wheels toys. Maybe I still do, I'm not admitting to that, but anyway, that's what I did when I was a kid. So those aspects of the of the movies still get to you there's also like the whole sentimental side of it the family stuff and you know i post i put a post on facebook the other day because obviously fast seven was on tv one night some nights ago and i ended up of course watching it that's the abu dhabi one where they jumped the car across three buildings which of course is utterly ridiculous but anyway who cares um but that's also the one that was also uh, paul walker's last one that's brian uh, in the uh, franchise and of course there's that big send-off at the end and you know you you can't help as a car person and the reason you can't help as a car person shedding a tear at that point is because all of us in the car community know that paul walker paul actual paul walker the the, the actor was a total utter and complete car guy i mean there you there is a documentary somewhere it's probably on youtube go and search for it he goes to Japan. There's not Brian, there's not the character, he's not acting. This is actually Paul Walker. And of course, people have seen his entire car collection. That's another video that's on YouTube. But there's another documentary, he goes to Japan and he gets to drive some of his, you know, some of the cars that he's fan worship, you know, GTRs and stuff like that. And it's just so genuine. The excitement, you know, we're all there with him. You know, we're all giggling with him. We're all excited with him. It's just so genuine. And I think that, you know, that level, we all kind of, all car people kind of related to him, you know, and really felt like, you know, he's definitely one of us, you know, regardless of who else is in the movie or whatever. But with Paul Walker, there was like, he's, he's one of us, you know, he loves this stuff, you know, and, and that's why his death probably hit us so hard. And when they had that scene, I mean, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> it's extraordinary, right? So. There's another sequence in this movie, again, no spoilers, but I don't know if you can hear me, I'm in a tunnel now. And there's a police car coming up behind me. I'm not in a Fast and Furious movie, trust me, that's alright, yeah, honestly. But there's another sequence in this movie, and it comes towards the climatic end. And again, trying not to give too much away, but you know, he's up against it. Vin Diesel, he's there in his classic Charger, his signature classic black Charger. And uh, the villain is there, the villain who is, I, 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 you know, that's, it's, it's played by, uh, what's his name, Jason Momoa, who plays Aquaman. And I gotta say, brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. He has, he plays a really camp villain, but he's got the best lines, he's got the best dialogue, he's got the best jokes, and he plays it brilliantly. With the right hint of, uh, 
wacky menace if you like you know but anyway so he's there and he's taunting Vin Diesel he said, I've taken everything away from you, nobody's coming to help you, you're all on your own, and now I'm about, I'm about to kill you because two massive trucks are coming, got lorries basically, are coming straight at you, and there is no way out, and you've had it. And, uh, and of course Vin Diesel thinks about it, looks around him, and in that Vin Diesel way where, you know, minimal, minimal lines, minimal lines, he delivers, a, well I think it's probably one of the best lines of the movie, as a car person. As a car person, I think it's the best line, one of the best lines of the movie, because it appeals to me. Because what he says, he said, he says to the, the villain, he says, you've made one mistake. You didn't take away my car. Wow! <laughs> and I think that all car people will be like, yeah, it's the car. Ultimately, and it's him also saying, admitting, you know, I'm in the movie, let's be honest. The movie is crazy, it's nuts, it's bonkers. But there's something very um, introspective about, especially the last two, this, this edition and the one before. There is something introspective about these movies because in the, in the previous movie, you had the Tyrese character constantly throughout the movie with like a running gag saying, none of us die. We do, we do these impossible things and we don't die. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, it was kind of like a, a breaking the, 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 what they call it, breaking the fourth wall, kind of like an in-joke sort of thing, you know? And then you, and then you have that a little bit in this movie where, again, trying without giving too much away, you know, one of the characters says is that, you know, no matter who you are, when you're, you know, with, with this, this family, it takes its enemies and they turn them into families. They, they all become part of the gang. <laughs> Somebody there just admiring the car. And they all become part of the family. They all become part of the gang. And uh, and, it's, and what did he call it? He said it's like a cult of cars. What is this? It's like a cult of cars. What is this all about? You know? And I think that that's true. And if you're a car person, if you're one of these people like me, the that most of your social network is through the car community. You go to car events, you do car things, then you'll totally get that. The cult of cars, you know. And it's not a bad thing, it's a great thing. I think, you know, cars are a force for good. <coughs> and if you're able to, to meet people, make friends, create social circles, great communities through cars, that's, that's not a bad thing really, is it? In conclusion, I would say, Whatever you see in the reviews, whatever you think about, I mean, to be honest, I think it's done really well. Apparently, it did 300 million in its opening weekend, so it's, it's going to do well. And it's part one of two, so it's part. We'll just be ready, be ready for that. It doesn't end. It doesn't actually end. The movie doesn't end. It just it literally they literally leave it on a cliffhanger, you know. And uh, so there is a part two, which I think is coming <clears throat> not next year, but the year after. I think we actually have to wait a year and a half for the next installment. But, it, but it's worth it. It is worth it. If you have any interest of cars, if you have any, uh, I mean, it's just a fun action movie as well. If you like Marvel movies, you like this. But if, especially if you're a car person, if you have any interest in cars, you gotta go see it. It's brilliant fun. And also, you know what? It's for us. It's for the car people. Let me know what you thought of the movie if you've seen it. Brown car. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same. Just go here or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free. But this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.